Crash shouldn't just have the entire movie to himself. An actor's only as good as who he's acting with. Am I right, Tommy? Uh, you're right, Jamie. So are, are you suggesting that we add more characters to this film? I am uh, suggesting exactly that. So, what do you think would be a natural foil for a cat? Well, obviously, since we're doing a house pets, not everybody out there in the world are cat people. So I think we should do a dog, for uh, one. All right, good call. That's the natural foil. I like that. Nice, nice. And then maybe we'll just throw in some characters here and there. Like, maybe what else could be a good foil for a cat? Well, for the cat, too, obviously, there's the ob- obvious cartoons like Tom and Jerry, so we could do a cat and mouse chase as well. So combine the mice with the dog and Crash here, and I think we've got us an interesting trio of characters that'll make our film very, very animated. Nice, nice. Yes, that is the good basis of a good story. So... Let's get some solid drawings down of our secondary characters, of our dog and mouse, just like we did with Crash. All right, so uh, unfortunately we don't have any dogs or mice here, so we're just going to have to make those up from our imagination. But that's what we're here to do, is spark your imagination. So obviously we started from a picture to draw from, and we made it a little bit more cartoony, as you can see here. And now from here, what I'm going to do is just come up with a couple dog and mice sketches. Yes, and since Crash was kind of more of the star of the show, that's why a little more emphasis was paid on him as far as right. some sort of reference. Right, so as usual, starting off with the circle, and like we said before, uh, these basic shapes are kind of the shapes that you'll be making out of clay. So I'm going to start with the dog, if you can't already tell. <laughs> nah. Because uh, I'm going to start the, mo- the mouse this way, too. So the dog, since, since Crash here has more of a, a squished snout. I'm going to give the dog a little bit of a longer snout here. Yeah, and always if you're stuck when it comes to these type of things, you can just think about what makes a distinctive look of a dog. Is it the droopy ears, the long snout? It's a combination of all these things. Just think of, you know, what do you think of when you think of a dog or you think of a cat? Right, and just to counter what we're doing with Crash here, since he has pointy ears, we're going to give the dog uh, I, some droopy ears I'll draw on. And what you can do is if you don't want your dog to have droopy ears when you make them out of clay or when you draw them, is you can make pointy ears like this uh, because you can take all the different techniques we use uh, in making these characters and you can make characters of your own. So if your dog at home doesn't have droopy ears, you can make the pointy ears or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So once again, I'm going to draw in another axis line down the... Not necessarily the center of the circle, but I'm going to follow the contour of the circle itself. And this is going to be the direction that he's facing. And as you can see, I drew his snout facing off to the right before I drew this line here. And I'm just kind of sketching in, just feeling it in here. And this will tell me where his eyes are going to go. I'm going to start off by making him too cartoony to start off with. Give him some eyebrows up here. Or eyelids. So what exactly does secondary characters mean? Well, that means that Crash here, as I'm saying, is our main character. So that means that he'll be seen on the camera, or he'll be seen in the camera the most. Whereas as their secondary characters, you'll just see them here and there. And so that's why not as much emphasis is paid on a lot of the details and stuff of the sort. So that's why when we say secondary characters, that's really what we mean by that. Right. The secondary characters you can also think of as backup characters, where our primary character is the star of the show. The story focuses around either what they're going through or their point of view. So we'll obviously be following Crash around more than we will the dog and the mice. So as you can see, I did some overlapping wrinkles on the nose. I'm going to draw in some jowls down here. a little bit of a smile up here. Yeah, there you go. Give him a little character. Yeah, and obviously the clay might not turn out exactly like this, but this is here to help guide you along. Exactly. Because while it is something you guys can do, just go right from the top of your head to start building and sculpting a dog, it's it's obviously it helps you out when you have something to kind of have a frame of reference, when you have a nice little picture that will help you out with the shapes. If you get a little stuck in an area, you can just always refer back to the picture. Right, and also if you guys are getting a little stuck, if you are indeed following along with how I'm drawing this dog exactly, you can always go back and rewatch our videos 
um, because I'm not describing every single step here with how I'm drawing the dog, and that's because we want to focus primarily on the claymation aspect of our film. So I'm just going to add in a little shadow here on the back ear, just so I know that this is the back ear. Right, and, and also, his head. and also, what he's kind of going off of here with the characters is not only is the uh, is the scope and story going to be a little bit more simpler for you guys in the very beginning, but the characters as well, just so that way you guys can get a nice little, almost like a nice little frame of reference to build up all your characters from. Because we don't want to have you guys start off with something overly complicated right away. Because then you'll lose out on the fun of claymation. It's fun to just kind of get your hands dirty with something simple. Yep, and just experiment. Exactly, and then gradually work your way up and uh, follow us along, uh, of course. Yep. And uh, with experimenting, too, you guys obviously have more experience, and then in doing so, you'll want to move on to more more complicated characters as well. Because we, we keep referring to Seymour here as the advanced character, that we'll be kind of making. Uh, obviously, it won't be him exactly, but it'll be a character like him with the wire skeleton and the, the baked head and everything else that goes into him. But you, despite the fact that we'll be making human characters, keep in mind, you can also make animal characters that same way. Mm -hmm. Just something to keep in mind for the future. And maybe I'll just go ahead and stick in a tongue here. Why not? Great, and now we can probably start our little mouse guy, which luckily, since he'll just be a tiny little blob, nothing overly complicated can be with him. Right, so obviously I'm starting with the circle again, and with the clay I would start off as the circle too, and then I, for the mouse I'd give him a, add a triangle on over here on the side. And it's kind of like a teardrop shape, if you see it from this angle. But we're drawing the mouse this way, so obviously it's a teardrop on its side, almost like a piece of candy corn too. Um, and the mouse is going to be overly simplistic, and you will find out why once we get to the story aspect. Ooh, mysteries abound. Don't worry, it's not a cliffhanger. We'll get into it soon. Yes. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to just draw on some eyes here. Draw on the ears. Yeah, so as you've kind of discussed, it's like some diamond shapes, cones, and then just simple little spheres. Right. And what I would do with the clay is make the ball and then pinch out his nose part from that ball of... Mm -hmm. Gray clay. Yeah, and that's the other great thing with the, with you guys drawing it out. You can kind of visualize while you're drawing out how you would sculpt it as well. Right, and then we would just have a little pink tail hanging off the back, the back end here. As you can see, I didn't draw legs. Uh, because the mouse is going to be so small, we don't have to worry about animating the legs. And if we did have them, it would be very kind of complicated to move the legs along underneath as we go. When uh, obviously our dog and cat here will be quite larger and they will be all on four legs and a lot more easy to animate. Yeah, because with that mouse, if you guys even have seen uh, mice scurrying across, they don't even look like they're, they're walking along with their legs. They almost like they're hovering. So that's kind of what we'll try to mimic in a way. Right. So now that we have our characters, we can start to get a rough idea as to what we would like for our story. So main characters always need an arc. We always need some sort of interest to keep our audience uh, fully at attention. So, Tommy, what should we do with this story? Well, what we could do is have the cat, or Crash, as he is called. Uh, we could have him, as you had mentioned before, sleeping, but he's going to be guarding some things. A pile of, you know, you could have cat toys, for example, um, or even cheese, or even bones, or whatever. He's put in charge of guarding stuff at his home. And dog. What do you think we should have the dog do, Jamie? Well, I'm thinking more the mouse is after whatever this cat is holding. Cat obviously knows that someone's out to get his stuff, and that's why he keeps it close to the chest, so I to speak. I see. So the classic cat and mouse game. Exactly, because that's a good little story to just kind of build off of. Right, and it, this also goes into play for other animations. If you guys can't come up with amazing ideas at first, always just refer back to the chase, because a lot of classic cartoons follow that same setup where one character wants something, one character is guarding it, and obviously those two storylines clash. Yes. And there you have it, a story in itself. Classic foil. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So now that we have a good idea as to what we're going to do, we're going to be doing uh, a little bit of storyboarding, which is exactly what we've told you guys would be the best way to do uh, before you start animating. So that way, also like these sketches here... You have a nice frame of reference for your story as well. 
Right, and now what Jimmy means by a storyboard is essentially you guys will be making a short little comic for your animation. It'll be a series of individual pictures that guide yourself or the audience or whomever is helping you uh, animate. Not, not, not the audience, whoever is helping you animate uh, what each scene will be. So we'll go ahead and just draw out a series of boxes here. And I'm just being really sketchy and drawing them a little bit small. Uh, these drawings don't have to be overly detailed because it's really just for your reference or whoever is animating with you. Because uh, the characters can be just stick figures, but they have to be clear enough so you can tell what, what action is going on inside of the image. So you can translate that into clay and essentially into film. Right, and when you leave yourself a little bit of space on the right there, too, as Tommy has done, you can also write yourself little notes as well, so that way you guys can always have a good reference, other than just pictures, just the words as well, just to remind yourself as to where you are and where you need to be. Right, you can go ahead and do what I'm doing here and, like, number them, and just draw a little line on the side if you'd like, and that will just tell you what type of action is going on in each panel. And if you like to, you could uh, number them underneath, put the lines underneath. I just quickly sketched this up on the paper here because this is the, the setup that I decided to go with. Exactly. Whatever you're comfortable with. So, much like how all of our demos have started off, we start off with an establishing shot as a way to kind of get your audience into what we're going to be filming. All right. So, since we will be doing the cat, dog, mouse, I feel like we should do like the living room setup. Yeah, I think so. Right. And the best part about using a living room setup is you guys can just use your own living room as a nice frame of reference in case you guys can't think of a cool little space to be in. Because it almost makes it like a nice little personal touch that, you know, all this cool, crazy clay action is going on right in your own living room. Right, and then uh, referencing stuff in your own life, it once again is perfect for coming up with ideas for animation. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to start off with here is essentially what I'm doing right now is designing the set. In a way, so um, we're just going to have a couch over here, and obviously up against the wall we could have windows. Uh, this actually isn't going to be the final set design, this is just an idea. And we'll have the cat bed over here with Crash sleeping inside of it. And obviously Crash, I just did a little black blob inside of there because uh, you'll probably just see his back. Maybe his tail hanging out over here, moving back and forth. Which is what I see all the time. He's just a big black blob. <laughs> yep. And uh, we can have the mouse hole somewhere on set. And maybe all the stuff that Crash is guarding back here. And for the description, I'm just going to say shot of the living room. Yeah, and uh, as we've described many times, this is what the establishing shot will be. Right. So from here... We're going to zoom in towards Crash sleeping in his bed. And this will also kind of still be part of the establishing shot. Uh, we're just going to be zooming in with the camera, and we'll get more into detail with that as we go along. Now for zooming in, what we like to do is um, just draw in directional arrows that tell you what's going to be happening. So I'm going to draw arrows pointing into the frame itself. And this will actually be coming from this establishing shot here, zooming in. So what I can then do also is draw just another square here. And I ideally, you could draw all these directions in a different color just so it's much, much clearer. So there we have Crash Sleeping, zooming in. Yeah, really, whatever whatever little marks you guys can come up with that'll help you remember. This is just what we use that'll help us remember. Right. We have our own little marks. Professional filmmakers have their own little marks. And just whatever helps you along. Mm -hmm. And you obviously don't need to go into a Zoom as well. This is just what we're going to be doing with ours. Right. You can basically take what we'll be teaching you while animating and just take tips and tricks here and there and come up with your own type of uh, animation. Which is techniques. why we're so eager to see what you guys can do with it. Yep. Great. So, so for the third scene, what now that we do, Jamie. Well, now that we've established Crash sleeping and with his um, 
and with his little toys there, and it looks static, where nothing's really moving, as they say, we can start to go back to the shot that we had, and then show the little mouse zooming around, trying to find something. All trying right. to find that little treasure. So, just to save time here, uh, we'll just draw the mouse hole, and the mouse can come out of it. And instead of drawing out a bunch of panels as to where he would be going all over this set, what you can just do is almost write your little notes. Like, he comes out here, yeah. and he kind of scatters around the set. Because ultimately what he's trying to do is find what this cat is guarding. And what we'll probably end up doing while animating, at least with this one, is improving some of the actions. And improv is basically coming up with something on the spot. So what we're going to have is the mouse come out of the hole, and it'll just scurry around the set. What that set pattern or path it's going to be, I'm not sure yet. We'll figure that out once we have the set built so we can see how much space the mouse has to run around the floor. Yep, because as we've said, a lot of it's just a blueprint because some of the best directors in the biz... They always have a good frame in mind as to what they want to shoot, but once they get on the set, that really just sparks their imagination and creativity, and they can even alter the shot altogether. Right. So now the next scene would be then, I'd assume, Crash waking up. Uh, he's poking around and trying to find... He, yes, he, he gets awake and sees that our little mouse friend here is taking the bone that's in his little pile of toys, his little pile of treasures. All right, so we would have... What we could do for the next shot is just cut away to crash so it's not just the one camera movement following around the mouse the entire time uh, we can have the mouse come over to the toys and then the next major shot we would do is crash waking up because he hears the mouse um, digging through the pile of toys here yeah because it's mainly what's going in the storyboard or what's going to be the big uh, action points of the shot so to speak because what we definitely could do is have him animate a bunch of little spots around the cat where the cat wakes up and looks around, nothing's there, goes back to sleep. Right, and what even could wake Crash up is the mouse kind of like bumping in to his bed, and then the movement of that would wake him up too. Mm -hmm. But this is just all coming up with ideas at the moment. Right, and that's a great way to build tension that will entice that audience even more as they're wondering so much then if that mouse is going to get whatever he's looking for. He's, he's constantly trying to sneak around there, but the cat hears something, knows that he's there, but it just is a great way to build up tension for the audience. All right. So, and then over here we see the pile of toys, and then obviously the mouse digging through it. And now with this... Uh, a lot of action will ensue in that as well, but now with our next panel will be the chase, so to speak. So, we so for the description, the chase. Common movie plot. Time testing. All right. Great. So for that, you would think that they're probably going to be chasing all around the set, Tommy, right? So yeah. it probably wouldn't be any sort of zoom at that point. It... What I envision would be it may be zooming out from here, or it would cut away to the mouse again. Once again, we'll get more in-depth into certain camera shots as we go along, but just for the main action, I'm going to just draw Crash chasing the mouse, and we can just say that they're chasing right here. After the mouse has the bone, which is weird, uh, but we can... We, we, I'm sure there's an explanation for that. Oh, there's got to be. So just, just a quick sketch of Crash in motion here. Very, very loose, very, very animated, if you will. And I've got the mouse just holding onto the bone with its tail here. We can also change that up as it goes along, and I might just draw some action lines here. And uh, what's great is when we get to that, we can use some of our old techniques, such as snake and slithering, because much like how this little mouse could be the head of the snake, the cat could almost be like the tail, because the tail will follow the head. So, yep, now that we have such cool little demos like that, that's why they come in handy. Or even, too, if you guys want to animate the cat tail moving back and forth, it's essentially the same movement as the snake. It's just a follow-through movement. Exactly. That's the great thing about some of those foundation demos, is really you can spot them in a lot of in a lot of areas that'll help you out. Right, and despite the fact that they're the first things that we had you guys watch, always, always go back to them to reference them if need be. Mm -hmm. So now with our final shot, let's see, what would be the grand reveal? Hmm. Well, the mouse would then go into the hole, which I'm just going to go ahead and just draw another 
another frame with the mouse going in. And always feel free to draw more uh, more boxes if need be, like I did here. Yeah, you're, not, you're definitely not restricted to the old six pack there. All right, so moving on to the next frame. Yep. If he's going, if he's going past there, then realistically the cat won't be able to follow. No. So he would then essentially just run into the hole. Yep. All right. So I'm just going to draw this on an angle here, so I get an idea of what we want to look at. So uh, basically, crash will crashes. crash. <laughs> so I'm going to draw a cat scrunched up here. Bunch of overlapping lines. Just he's kind of kind of accordion into the wall. Ah uh, yes. And uh, kind of what we've been saying before, instead of drawing a lot of these actiony type lines, you can just have a little description for them as well. If you're not so confident in your drawing abilities. As we've been saying, just as just ways that you guys can remember what you guys need to be doing and shooting. All right, so just a heads up, what we would be doing then would be either squishing Crash, uh, the sculpture that we had sculpted uh, to animate, or what you can do is kind of um, swap out a stunt double for him or take apart the clay character too, so we would see piece by piece going in. But that, once again, will be more in-depth as we move along. Exactly, but now that we have this in our mind, that's the great thing about with the storyboarding as well, because now we have an idea as to where it's going to go, so we know that we might have to squish our main character a bit. So then right. we can pre-plan, Yep. as we've been doing. Which exactly is what this is here, pre-planning. Mm -hmm. So now it's revealed then, with the, with the mouse on the other side, why he would need that bone. And that, my friends, is for our dog to come in. So our dog is going to be hiding back here. But now, why would the dog? How 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 would the dog have control over the mouse? That it's is the mouse indebted to the dog, where he has to do some uh, sneaking around to get the bone for him, or? Well, that's the great thing. You guys can fill in the blanks. But for this one, we can make him a little robot, a little robot mouse. Really? Yes. That way, we can make a cool little uh, make a cool little remote control for our dog. He's clearly outsmarted the cat. Because that's a nice little twist, because usually this, the cats are the smart, conniving little ones. But at the end of the day, the dog is the one. So as you can see right now, I'm just drawing in a little remote control. Just something a little simple. Sometimes the simpler the things are, the more cartoony they look. And it's also good to keep in mind with the story. The simple it is, the better it is for the audience to understand. Right, and then obviously the mouse has the bone. And then for our final shot, the dog would have the bone. Yep, and almost kind of a little bit of a nod to the camera. Yep. Great. So. And I think that that's a great, uh, I think we have a great little storyboard there for us to kind of go off of. So, now that we have our characters and our story, what's next on the list, Tommy? Next up, I believe, would be our set. Set design. Now that we've visualized what this set is, now let's build it. Let's dream it and do it. Right. So. Just getting the next sheet of paper ready for the next demonstration, so see you then. See you guys.